Well, good morning, everybody. Hey, fish heads, what is going on? Jen Crevasi at Jekyll Baits in the shop at the finishing desk. This stuff just came off the clear coat rack. Um, it's going to get dressed and it's going to go out the door. So I'm giving this to you on a Sunday morning. I'm going to be fishing and uh, yakking pretty much all day tomorrow. But just to kind of give you an idea of what's been happening in the last day or so here at Jekyll Baits. Let's start with some prop baits. This is a double, double prop subsurface. This is based off of a duo blank, free spinning. There we go. In a crappie pattern. This one's a crappie. Pretty realistic. Now on this, hey, my hands are not completely jacked. It's still early in the day. That's going to change. Um, all aside from the bass thumb. Actually, that's a trout thumb. I got raked over by trout teeth this past week on a fairly sizable one. Two pounds. Good deal. Uh, that video will drop shortly. So on these, um, these are in the testing stage. And we're going to be testing them locally and sending a few up to Indiana to Greg Gilly, another pro staffer. This is the fluorescent version. Um, you could kind of interpret this as a frog. But you always want to brush the epoxy for those of you that are airbrushing and just figuring stuff out. Brush it on stuff with moving parts. It's a lot easier to do that. There we go. Keeps the, uh, the propellers free spinning once that dries. Just be very careful with it. So I like the way they've turned out. Um, it's, it's a silent except for the propellers on it. But the propellers should make enough water displacement to where you're going to get what you need, the desired effect. Here is the darters and a jerk bait. Um, I've layered in the gill on this. It doesn't really come with much of a gill, so you have to kind of give that 3, 3D effect. Um, and I just, I've really been digging the way these have come and have been turning out. These have really come into the, the foreground here. This past week I've been testing the crap out of them and they've been catching small mouth after small mouth after small mouth. So super happy. This is a rainbow darter. Um, that is its name in the wild. If you look it up, look them up. Um, you'll see that the patterning is close. And uh, we've been furiously trying to get that color combination correct and just find the best. There we go. Where are you at? There you are find the best color combination that'll get the job done and uh, just having a lot of fun with these and they do work folks they work very well but again the, the gills are layered in with an airbrush on this particular bait and this is a this is like an x-wrap style floating it's a fairly quick rise float it's a very good for a knockoff it's a very good blank um, does everything that it's supposed to do. It's weighted well. You can hear that weight transfer system in it. And uh, when you don't load it down with paint and layers like I have, it's got a super cool reactive flash. You can actually see that flash a little bit underneath in that shot right there. It's There we go. You can see that. Okay, on to these. Now I get, I, I get questions all the time. Where do you get your reference charts? I had a question this morning waiting for me from one of my customers and another airbrush artist um, that, that gets online on my Facebook Jekyll Bates page. And they asked where I get my reference charts. Well, folks, um, I fish all the time and I try and take as many videos and, and photographs of the fish that I'm catching as possible. And that's where I get, I would say, 99% of the patterns that I'm coming up with are based on what I'm actually seeing in the wild. Even though some of them are a little exaggerated, you know, I love uh, working with bold colors. Um, but I just like, the, for example, I just spent the last couple of days up on Norfolk in uh, the top of Arkansas, north central Arkansas, um, just catching panfish and catching a bunch of brim. So the other place that I love to go, I'm a, I'm a book hound. And you can also get references online too. I mean, if you just type in the fish that you want to paint, you're going to get a million picture, pictures when you bring the images up. So that's my recommendation is actually, you know, do the research, do the work, um, find your own stuff, find your own photos. 
But um, this one I also have Missouri. Uh, pretty much I've got some fairly complex books and references that I can use, but I prefer to use my own pictures of stuff that I've caught. Now obviously not everything is match the hatch. Um, this is an order of four going out. This is uh, on a KVD 1.5. And on this particular one, the Sassy Gill pattern, I love doing these patterns as well. This is a little bit brighter, a little bit bolder. You can still see that it's got that, that, uh, that gill reference to it. But um, just a lot of fun. And these, these are not knockoffs, obviously. These are brand name baits that I'm doing pro-line pro repaints on. Wiggle warts, wiggle warts, wiggle warts, wiggle warts. These are a ton of fun to do. I love doing crawl patterns. I like doing stuff a little bit different than everybody else is doing it. Um, for num number one reason, the fish are not necessarily seeing what I'm, what I'm presenting to them. When you, when you do a bunch of cookie cutter baits, a bunch of the same patterns, everybody's seen it, all the fish get wise to it. So I like to switch it up a little bit create my own unique patterns and I use my own unique stencils as well. Um, just a super fun stencil. These are hand cut stencils. They're actually from just cardboard cutouts. I'm not using anything fancy. I'm not using vacuum boxes. It's all exact a knife. Old school. Old school, old school. But I, it's just how I like to do it. It's not that I can't make a vacuum box. There's shop vacs, you know, you, that's really all you need, and a heat gun, and the right sort of plastic. But with this, da, 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 da. let's put this up to the light here. You can see that this is translucent. So this is gonna be phenomenal in clear water, stained water. Just, man, super happy with how these wiggle warts come out. I love painting them. Crunchberry, chrome eyes, a little bit of a, a neon fluorescent touch to it, black and red, almost like a scarab beetle. And I really think that this is going to get some good reaction to it as well. Frogs, topper season all summer long, love throwing top water. Um, treble hooks, um, if you can stay along the edges and out of the grass probably have a better chance of success with poppers like this. If you're in open water and you got a little bit of wind, this is the American Bullfrog. I do lighter and fluorescent versions of this. Uh, play around with different eyes and different bodies of water for customers. But it's got that real cool pearlescent paint all the way around it. Got just a little shot of copper and then some burnt sienna on the face. We've got those glow reflective eyes. So I need to order more eyes from John Keminis. Gosh, I hope I don't slaughter your name. You only need to tell me how you say your last name because I just feel like I'm butchering it every single time I try. I apologize. And last but certainly not least, it's a 2.5. Just love the blending that goes into these. Obviously a pumpkin seed. And on this, I'm starting with an orange underlayer and then layering that 3D effect and scaling and blending the colors on top of that. So that's it. Nine minutes, probably a little bit too long, but I'm going to be on the water and yakking all day tomorrow. So www.jekyllbaits.com, about 85 to 90 percent of everything that I sell is there. You can also find me on Facebook. You can find me at Jekyll Bates. Just look up Jekyll Bates, J-E-K-Y-L-L -L Bates. At Jen Cravasi on Twitter and Jekyll424 on Instagram. I will see you guys later. Oh yeah, Jekyll424 on YouTube as well, which is how you guys are viewing me this morning.